Now, let's get back again to each of these flows and talk about them in details. Let's get started with authorization code grant type. We're going to have our user interacting with our applications, right? So they tap or click. The request goes to server. So user will see a contest and they will approve and then the authorization grant will come back. So the authorization grant together with secret and client ID on server will be checked and validated. Once that is validated, the access token will come back to our Flutter application. Then we have access token. We can send our request, an HTTP API call to our backend. If in this case, for example, our backend is different, then they need to communicate with that authorization server and make sure that the token is valid. Once that is confirmed, then the response is back. Now let's take a look at a real example. Imagine now that I have an authorization server under my domain. Well, we learned about authorized endpoint. The authorized endpoint will have different parameters. So let's talk about the first parameters. These are the most important ones or also the required one. Response type code shows the authorization code grant flow. All right, that's good. We're going to have client ID. Well, this can be accessed by, well, you can ask any server admin or authorization server admin to give you this client ID. In case of Auth0, you can get it from dashboard. And that can be publicly revealed. Then redirect URI. We talked about terminology, right? After that redirection, after that authorization authentication, where should user be redirected? You need to register that in also Auth server. So that's going to be my client and, you know, my app and the callback, let's say, URI in this case. You can also pass state to authorized server and you can receive it too. You can also define the scope. In this case, open ID means I just want to authenticate user. Then after the authorization authentication is done, you will be coming back to the redirect URI, the callback. What you receive is the code and the state that you passed. State is usually good things if you want to keep track of, you know, different states. What else you can do? Well, so far you get access to the code, but you need to get access token. What you can do now, you can post your authorization code that you receive as a grant parameter to OAuth token endpoint on the authentication server. You can also pass a state if you want. Again, you can define a redirect URI after successfully validating the authorization code and then the client ID and then client secret. You should make sure this is going to happen in your backend. You should not reveal client secret publicly. Once you do that on your backend side, well, voila, you will receive a respond which gives you access token and token type where from now on you can make a request to any APIs and can validate your users. All right, now let's talk about implicit flow. So imagine now you have a website. Typically implicit flow is implemented on a website or like a single page application. So you have a website, you have user, they click, they go to authorization server. So they will come back and you know, maybe have the contest and everything is fine. They will actually get back access token right away. There is a difference here between this one and the previous one. If you imagine right now, there is no validation in between anymore. So you receive an access token right away with implicit flow. So you can imagine this is less secure probably. Once you have the access token, then you can make this request by access token to the API and then API will validate that access token with authorization server. Once it's validated, then you will receive your API respond. Now let's see in an action. We're going to have authorization server as I explained, and then we're going to have authorize, you know, endpoints so we can pass different parameters. But in this case, response type 
will be token. A token means this is implicit flow. We pass client ID, redirect, state, and a scope. Well, a scope can be any scope. In this case, we just want open ID. Then, after the other authentication is done, user will be back to the client, the callback. So, but it will come back with access token and state expire in and token type. So, in fact, instead of you later send the code to validate and get access token, this time you will directly get access token and token type in the callback uh, URI. All right, now let's get into the last type, client credential. So typically this is a server to server communication where you have your client ID and secret, you pass that to the authorization server and that gives you access token. That's simple because that is server. You can simply have secret and request anything that you want from authorization server. Once you have that access token back, you can request any API calls on that server. Once that's validated, then you will receive a response. Let's take a look at that in action. First of all, this is a bit different. In the two previous flows for mobile or web applications like implicit and grand type, you have to have authorized you define your response type and then you react based on that. But in server to server, you have your authorized server, you have OAuth token endpoint as we discussed, but in fact, you need to post to this endpoint with a header, authorization header, which is going to have a basic uh, encryption, which client ID is like a username and client secret is password. After setting authorization header with a basic, you know, encryption that I explained right now, you need to define your body. This is a post request. What you need to send is a grant type. You define client credentials and the scope, open ID, API, or any other scope that you want. If everything goes well, you will receive a response. You get access token, token type, and everything else that you need. All right, all what we have seen so far are OAuth 2. So in OAuth 2, let me give you this chart. First, we have server side applications where you can use authorization code. That's the recommended flow. You have single page applications. Well, implicit flow is usually fine. Native application. The recommendation says in OAuth 2.0, authorization code plus pixie we'll get back to pixie shortly machine to machine it's going to be client credential all right but there is one thing it's the latest version of oauth is now 2.1 and in 2.1 there is no more implicit flow and in fact single user fresh token and pixie across the board pixie is everywhere and no tokens back in the query string. Well, let's refine our, our table right now. So in OAuth 2.1, well, you have server side authorization with code and Pixie. Single page application authorization code with Pixie. Native applications authorization code with Pixie. Machine to machine cre client credential. All right. So now we know the latest update of OAuth 2.1. We can move on to Pixie. 